Hi everybody, and thanks for joining me today. So working some more on wing feathers. As you can see, following the colors as it make kind of stripes here. Yeah, we we're closing in on 40% done. We're at 39.8. Won't get 40 in this session, obviously, but this month, I should say, is, yeah, that will happen, no problem. Okay. So yeah, Kiddo is still practicing on his manual transmission driving. Yeah, my husband said, honestly, he's he's got it. It's just when he has to drive in traffic and sees other cars, he starts to get anxious and, yeah, and panic kind of. And I'm like, well, yeah, I get that. I have anxiety, so, <laughs> yeah, he said so. A little more practice and he'll be ready, but unfortunately, as Dan has to go away to Ontario for close to a week for work, so he won't be getting practice until he comes back. Because what happens is generally, yeah, my husband drives them out to some big parking lot or something that he can practice in. And then sometimes he has him try to drive home if he feels confident enough. But obviously, I don't drive sticks, so <laughs> I can't do that with him, yeah. I do plan to learn at some point just so I could, like, move the car out of the driveway onto the street if I had to kind of thing. But, um, yeah, it's not my thing. <laughs> I said, I, I don't get it. Uh, I said, why would you want to do more work when... There's a machine that can do the work for you, right? I just, yeah. I mean, I guess I get that you can't drive classic cars if you can't drive a stick, but yeah, I just, it's not my thing. Like, and my husband said, well, that's because the, they drove, you know, that's how cars were for a long time. I said, okay. And for a long time, people did laundry by banging it on a rock in the river. I'm not planning on doing that. I have a machine to do it for me. That's the whole point, right? I mean, I know they're better on gas and all that, but yeah, I just, the appeal is lost on me. <laughs> and yeah, like one of my friends said, they also have a Jeep and they think someone tried to steal it and gave up because it was a manual because they got it about 10 feet before they abandoned it. So, <laughs> uh. But yeah, it was funny. I was remembering there was an old episode of uh, NCIS when Ducky and his assistant end up um, getting held hostage by this bad guy. And um, at one point, Ducky basically talks the guy into, well, just keep him as a hostage, let his assistant go. And he kind of slips him his keys to his beautiful, fully restored 1920s, you know, classic car and so he jumps in and he tries to drive away and of course he doesn't know how to drive a stick right it's like he this horrible you know grinding sound and then you know ducky no stop you're stripping the gears and then like even the um the guy who's taking them hostage kind of rolls his eyes that you know the guy can't drive standard <laughs> and so anyway it's funny he he manages to get away or whatever and he's talking to the back that uh yeah i couldn't drive his car away because you know it was a it was a standard and uh and then Abby says, you know, oh, you can't drive a stick? And they kind of look, all look at her and, you know, I think it was Big e says, you can? She says, well, of course I can. I'm like, well, yeah, of all of them, if anyone could drive a standard, it would be her. <laughs> uh, yeah, I never got into that show when it first came out. I discovered it when it had been already out for like 10 years. And luckily, my sister-in-law had all the previous released seasons on DVD and she was quite happy to loan them all to me. I think it was 10 or even 15 years in, something like that. So yeah, I got to binge watch a lot. <laughs> well, as I was saying, I was looking for a new show to watch and uh, I kind of thought of doing that. She's like, okay, but you know, <clears throat> this was back in the days of cable. And she said, you know, if you're gonna watch it, you should watch it from the beginning, right? Because yeah, best to watch things in order, not come in the middle. So yeah, she loaned me all her, her DVD. So I was quite busy for for close to a year <laughs> catching up. Mm. 
That's how I got my husband into it, too. Ugh. Yeah, I was kind of disappointed. They made a spin-off, um, a Hawaii version, which I was enjoying, but unfortunately they canceled that. So they won't be renewing it for, I think, a fourth season, which I'm kind of disappointed about. And I don't know if it's connected to the fact that they're putting out a prequel series called um, NCIS Origins, which is about young Gibbs when he first joins the... Uh, the NCIS, so yeah, I'm gonna watch that, but yeah, I'm kind of sad. They put out a Australian version, which has been renewed, which I'm glad I was enjoying that, but yeah, I really wish they kept the Hawaii one on, but yeah, unfortunately, they decided not to. I mean, I guess we can hope they might change their minds because uh, they have done that with a couple of shows. Um, SWAT was going to be canceled after last season. And then they decided, okay, we'll give it one more season to sort of wrap things up. And then they've actually renewed it for yet another, even though I don't know how well it's going to work because a bunch of the regulars, they tied up their stories and wrote them out because they thought that was going to be the last season, right? So, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> but yeah, very occasionally after they cancel something, they change their minds and uncancel it, but that's pretty rare. So, yeah. Yeah, sometimes it's no rhyme or reason. Like, I remember I was watching The Borgias, and it was supposed to have four seasons. They canceled it after three, even though it wasn't losing in ratings or anything like that. Just, they said, like, the director just kind of was like, eh, I don't want to do it anymore, which was frustrating. And they'd only had him contracted for the first three, so they couldn't really do anything about it. Yeah. I ended up, because it ended, like, on a cliffhanger... I ended up going online and finding somebody had written a script for a a tie-up movie and just read through that so I could figure out, yeah, who won and who lost. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, so, yeah, like I said, there's a little bit of closing in because of the way the colors are going, but I'm not really concerned with that, so. I'm gonna, so I can either decide to close a little bit or I can go back and forth between the colors a bit more. For the moment, I'll do that. I'm sure at some point I'll do the other. We'll see what we get done today. Because there's a few colors here, but they do kind of go sort of in stripes, which means I can often stitch sort of like a dozen in a row before I have to change colors again, which speeds things up a little. Okay. Yeah, who knows too, maybe the, um, the strikes hurt it as well. The show's uh, seasons were very short this year because of that. Yeah. They were on strike for several months, so a lot of shows that normally got, you know, Two dozen episodes only got ten, which kind of sucked, but I understand, yeah. Yeah, we were having a really nice day, some really nice weather. Unfortunately, we have wildfire smoke again. Yeah, there's some wildfires in northern... BC and the smoke has blown over here. So I'm really, really hoping we don't get a repeat of last summer. Yeah, last summer was the worst wildfire season Canada had had in like 50 years. And uh, yeah, because things were very dry and we had not a lot of snow or rainfall over this last winter and spring. So I'm really hoping we don't end up with that situation again because that was bad. Yeah, when we were driving to pick up this car, we had to drive through a lot of areas that had been burned and evacuated and such. Yeah, last last summer and uh, yeah. And also um, we could see like we drove by a lot of lakes and things. You could see that the water level was lower than it usually is by this time of year yeah like you could sort of see you know a foot 
below the normal shoreline. So yeah, it's not a good sign. That means things are probably dry, drier than they would hope. So yeah, hopefully we won't have a repeat of that because that's not good. So yeah, like I said, it rained a lot sort of the week before and I it found it depressing, but I reminded myself we do need the rain. <laughs> Yeah, and actually, I know there was a lot of um, Northern Lights activity where people can't normally see it. It was too, it was too smoky here for us to see anything really. Although it wasn't as disappointing for me because where I live, out on the prairies, we usually get to see the Northern Lights like every, every winter at some point. So it's not like I missed a once in a lifetime event like a lot of. Um, my friends on Facebook and stuff. It was, yeah. Where they live, it's almost never visible there. It's only because there's a increased solar storm activity that they could see the northern lights where they were. So, yeah, somebody posted one about, they said, yeah, they miss all the interesting, uh, phenomenon a uh, space phenomenon because uh it's always cloudy where they are or too much um light pollution right from living in a larger urban area yeah so like they said they missed the blood moon they missed uh yeah all sorts of stuff like that a lunar eclipse they couldn't see it uh yeah Yeah, we had a blood moon back in, I think it was 2015. That one we actually got to see. It was a really nice clear night and we drove uh, about half an hour out of town, out to the farmland. So there was basically no light pollution. Yeah, it looked pretty awesome. Uh, but the last one that came around, which was like last year, I think, or something. Um, yeah, it unfortunately was just too foggy we could see the moon and that it was kind of reddish, but yeah, like we tried to take some pictures. It was no good. It, it didn't show up well at all. So. Yeah, when we had the solar eclipse recently, we didn't live in the in the path of totality. It was just partial for us. Yeah, but I couldn't find. We had a a viewer that my husband had made um, the previous solar eclipse, and uh, I couldn't find it, so we didn't see it. Yeah, that one though that he did build the viewer for was. Uh, we were in the path where it was a lot darker. This one that barely cast a shadow. Yeah, we weren't, uh, we weren't close enough to the path of totality. So yeah. Yeah, they said a lot of people too, they, um, they use their cell phone camera to take pictures, not realizing that the lens also needed some protection because uh, yeah, some people fried their camera like, woo. <laughs> yeah. Like good that they didn't look at it, but uh yeah. Cuz yeah, the previous one I actually had to drive home from work while it was happening and yeah, it was it was kind of spooky. Everything was all orangey kind of colored. All the street lights came on was kind of like driving through a dystopian movie. <laughs> we had that once with wildfire smoke too. One year, yeah, it was so bad that at high noon, all the street lamps were on, I had to use my headlights and yeah, it was wild. It was like driving home in the middle of the night when it was noon, it was just, yeah, awful.
Yeah, so I would love to go for a walk outside like I usually do, but that's not going to happen because I don't want to breathe in that wildfire smoke. Like we have our, our HVAC is on, you know, circulating instead of pulling in fresh air, but even so I can feel sort of my throat is being irritated by that smoke in the air. I don't know if I, you can hear it in my voice, but yeah, it's a little bit sore from that. Yeah, we are fortunate that where we live, we're usually safe from the fires. We deal with the smoke, but yeah, like there's sort of not enough forest or brushland around us that, uh, that it reaches us, so fingers crossed, yeah. Yeah, we've been fortunate that the smoke is all we have to deal with. We've never been in danger of losing our home, which, yeah, would really suck. <laughs> Yeah, there was a few years ago, Fort McMurray, which is way up north in the mountains, basically the whole city burned. And uh, yeah, they had to evacuate. And uh, it was actually quite good to see how everyone pulled together. There were a lot of places like um, gas stations were giving out free uh, fills to people who were evacuated as long as you could show a you know, driver's license showing that you were from Fort Mac. They, a lot of uh, restaurants gave free meals to people, yeah. Of course, there's always one or two jerks who have to wreck it for everyone. There was a couple people who evacuated and while they were having a meal, somebody took off with their truck that had everything they'd managed to save from the fire in it, which is just like, wow, that's really low, you know? To take from somebody who's already potentially lost everything, you take the last bit of what they have, that's, yeah, really not cool. <laughs> Especially when a lot of those items would probably be sentimental value, right? Like photo albums and things like that that people will try to save that can't be replaced. Yeah. I don't know if they managed to get their stuff back, but I really hope they did because, yeah, that's just... Insult to injury. So yeah, every hundredth of a percent on this is about 30 stitches. So you can see it's moved to point eight one, and we've done 34. So, yeah. Yeah, and then I'm not sure. Yeah, so I said exactly half will be 153,450 stitches. <clears throat> I'm hoping to get to that by the end of the year, but it's not a goal because I'm not going to stress myself out. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, I was watching one of uh, Karen the Needlebug's uh, live streams earlier this month. She was saying, yeah, she set some goals for herself to try and get something done that she would stitch, you know, this many stitches per day on this project and all this stuff. She said, yeah, that lasted about a day and a half. <laughs> and she said, yeah, I was starting to feel too much like work. So, yeah. So, yeah, I agree completely. I want this to be fun. If it's getting stressful, then kind of defeats the purpose. <clears throat> yeah, lots of dark reddish colors here in this part of the feathers. And again, it's one of those, when you look at the mock-up, you don't really realize the depth of the shade until you actually stitch it. Because yeah, I was looking more browns and stuff, I didn't realize there'd be quite this much red in it but it looks good i think i haven't had this designer steer me wrong yet so
Yeah, I didn't realize there's sort of all this bits of green mixed in. These feathers here on the mock-up, it was harder to tell. <clears throat> but yeah, I sort of made a natural break point around these darker burgundies and such. Actually, well, I guess either way I'm going to have to do a stitch and park and switch no matter which color I stitch first, so it doesn't really matter which one. diverge with this red, this bright red, and go one will stitch in one run and one will split off and stitch that run there. to go to the store to buy some more bedding, including a new air mattress, because yeah, we've got family coming out to attend my niece's wedding, which is coming up very soon. Hard to believe. <laughs> My father-in-law and two siblings of my husband's siblings are coming, so. Fortunately, we have enough rooms, even if they're not technically bedrooms, that everyone can have their own room that has a door, <laughs> so they can have a little bit of privacy, which is nice, yeah. My son's uh, playroom, there's enough floor space to put an air mattress down there. And uh, we have our roll-away spare bed where my husband built it it works on tracks and it's it uh, rolls away under the main staircase yeah which is really nice and then yeah so I said yeah it's uh, motorized and everything it's got switches and that so I said yeah when your husband's an engineer he takes roll away bed to a whole new level it's all high tech right that it yeah it's motorized so he designed and built that all himself And then uh, I have an office space in the basement that again, it's clear enough on the floor that we can put another mattress there. So everybody will get their own, their own room. The only thing that kind of sucks is we don't have a lot of bathroom. We had a second bathroom downstairs, but it wasn't well done. The, um, yeah, they built the, um, the bathtub up on this kind of, um, platform but I don't know it it didn't look very sturdy my husband was always afraid if we filled it with water that it would break because it didn't look like it was very well done and we wanted a, sh a, a shower it was just a tub and uh, it was like a, a whirlpool tub but yeah like we wanted an actual shower downstairs not just a bathtub so we do have a corner shower that we bought but we haven't installed it yet and there was a toilet and sink down there, but the toilet always clogged. So we ended up taking that old one out and we haven't put a new one in. So yeah, we have our little ensuite two piece, which is just toilet and sink. And then we have a main bathroom. So yeah, that's the one drawback is it's kind of quite a few people to a sort of one shower. So we made it work when um, my husband's sister lived with us for about a year. Yeah, when she first came out here, she, uh, she stayed with us till she could get on her feet, but we made it work. So it was four of us to a bathroom, but yeah, we survived. <laughs> Took a little coordinating sometimes, but yeah, we managed. But eventually we do plan to finish that downstairs and put a bathroom that will at least have a corner shower and then toilet and sink. 
well, it was the whole laundry room. We had to do a whole bunch of work on it. Yeah. Because, um, well, we, um, we knocked down a wall and expanded the rec room, which ate into what used to be the bathroom space. So we finished all that off and we were going to put the bathroom sort of on the far wall. So we had to, yeah, we had to actually get a jackhammer and like drill into the concrete to put in the plumbing into the right space. That was real fun. <laughs> so my, my husband would uh, use the machine and I had a jug of water to pour sort of on the dust as it came up so it wouldn't fly everywhere. Oh, what a mess that was. Yeah, that was messy and you were very sore from crouching over. It was, it was not fun, <laughs> but we did it. Yeah. Like, yeah, the drain and everything is all set up. We just haven't gotten around to installing stuff yet. Well, my husband always wants to do it, like, in the summer, take some time off work. But lately, they've been so busy that sort of he hasn't been able to take off more than a day or two in a row. And it's sort of one of those, once you start, you want to go until it's finished. And it's going to take at least, like, a week to ten days to do it. So, yeah. He says, I do plan to get it done before I retire, but <laughs> who knows when. Yeah. And we said, like, this year we're working on renovating stuff upstairs in the summer. That's where the time's going to go. Because, yeah. We need to replace the carpet. It's actually... God, I had... Um, my vacuum cleaner got some loose fibers and pulled them out and... So it's the carpet actually has holes in it. So yeah, it it needs replacing. Because the carpet was already old when we moved in here 18 years ago. So yeah, it needs doing. <laughs> and, and then the walls and everything need to be refinished after he pulled wire through them. He had to cut holes. So yeah. <clears throat> Sometimes when you have to do it, this do-it-yourself stuff, you discovered that previous owners did it themselves and some of them did not know what they were doing. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. It was interesting, though. Um, we were sort of chatting with the, um, the finance officer at the dealership and she said, yeah, she had bought a 1940s house and so she discovered some interesting things well. Yeah while working on that. And uh, yeah, she actually found an old classic food stamp. It didn't have a year on it, but yeah, it was, uh, yeah, pretty cool. And she said she found uh, a one pill in the wall. She says, I have no idea what it is, you know? Who knows how long it's been there? Yeah, there was someone we know actually, their place that they bought had once been an old police station, so they actually found a bag of money in the wall. Yeah, like 800 bucks score, yeah. And they said like it was such old currency that like it has been updated since then, so you can't actually easily spend it at a store. You have to take it to the bank to get the face value back from it, yeah. Because they said like Canada changes their money design fairly regularly and uh, the money always retains its face value, so, yeah. Of course, some are worth more as collector's items, right? But, it, I mean, it depends. Just because the money's old doesn't mean it's actually really worth much more than the face value. But some of them you actually have to mail off to get the credit for. Some times the banks themselves will not take them, and you actually have to mail it to, like, the actual official Bank of Canada for them to verify that it is you know, a real note, not a counterfeit. And they will, they will send you back a check for the, the value. Because um, Canada actually used to have thousand dollar bills and they stopped printing those. Oh, geez. I think in the early 2000s, they were purple. Yeah. And, uh, and I mean, what retailer is going to take a thousand dollar bill, right? So yeah, if you have them, you have to 
send them by like registered insured mail and then if they determine that it is a genuine note they will mail you back a check for the thousand bucks yeah yeah it was uh, one of my friends said she was at the bank with her dad and they were making a big payment on like the land and yeah so he handed her six one thousand dollar bills to hold it's like <gasps> you know yeah when you're a teenager just like holy cow it's more money than i've seen in my life right mm. yeah i guess the thousands were for big you know big cash transfers if you wanted to do it with cash but yeah they weren't very practical yet so now the biggest one they print is the hundred yeah and even then a lot of retailers will not accept anything above a um a 20 yeah some of them won't even accept a 50 because we have a hundred a 50 and then 20 10 5 and then after that it's um it's bills. We used to have one and two dollar bills, but they phased those out. Oh, geez. The one dollar bill was in the 80s, I think. They stopped printing those. And the two dollar bill was in uh, 96. I remember because basically all the Toonies have not either 96 printed on them or 2002. Yeah. Because they released a... They released a, um, like a special edition in 2002 when uh, none of it was incorporated. Yeah. Because we used to have two territories, uh, Northwest Territories and Yukon Territories, and then they added another. They divided up the Northwest, and so now none of it is also a territory. Yeah, I said Canadian geography is easier to learn, though, because, you know, like... The U.S., they have 50 states. We have a lot fewer, right? <laughs> yeah. So. We don't really focus on it as much because, honestly, I'd have to sit there and think if I could even name them all. <laughs> uh, or the capitals. Yeah. I don't know, maybe it's more now because I remember having to help my son drill with those, remembering when they joined Canadian Confederation, what year, and yeah. Their capitals, which I myself could not remember. I said, these days you don't really have to memorize stuff as much, right? I mean, we all have a computer in our pocket, which we can just look it up easily, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I don't know, maybe there's a mnemonic to help you learn, but like I have one for remembering the uh, the planets. Although, of course, when I learned it, Pluto was a planet. <laughs> so, yeah. Goodness train out there just leaning on its horn okay we get it hopefully that doesn't mean anything's wrong okay let's see how far does that go okay so instead of crossing as I go I'm going to stitch downwards and back up and if there's any left whoops I will carry it over to park. I don't think there will be, but just in case. I hate to waste even an inch of usable floss if I don't have to, because I'm cheap. <laughs> is being very loud today or I think that might be my water machine
yeah, it was funny saying we got our kid a Jeep and then I was going through old photos and I joked, actually, it's his second Jeep because, yeah, when he was, he was a preschooler, we had one of those little motorized electric kids toys and that one was a designed to look like a Jeep Rubicon. So, yeah, <laughs> so now he's got a renegade. Although with his old little motorized one, he was more interested in washing it than driving it. Yeah. Or pretending he was fixing it. You know, he would put it up on a jack stand and pretend he was going under there and, and fixing things. Yeah. I said, this one he actually wants to drive. Yeah. Because I, I said, for Pete's sake, you know, we wouldn't have bothered buying you a vehicle that, you know, motorized vehicle that can actually drive if we didn't know you were never going to drive it. Right. <laughs> Oh, and then he would only, oh, I swear sometimes he would try to drive it in the winter, but I mean, of course the tires are just plastic, right? They're not rubber and they don't grip. And so of course then he'd just be spinning them and they wouldn't move. And then he'd get really upset. Oh, I was like, well, drive it in the summer. But in the summer, all he wanted to do was pretend he's washing it. So yeah, I don't know. Kids are funny. Ooh. Ooh. Oh dear, goodness, pardon me. Okay, so I'm gonna be adding extra threads, I think. Not for the moment, I don't need to, but yeah, they do kind of branch off in all directions. So generally use different threads rather than jumping all over the place with one. Okay, I'm gonna carry one from lower down and carry it up. Just as usual, trying to fill in along the, the edges of what's already there. Yeah, that old motorized Jeep, we uh, we gave it to my uh, my husband's boss because they have they have three boys and they're younger. So, yeah, it's perfect. But I think their oldest is like six or something. So, yeah, it's just the right size for them. So, yeah, like sort of every time our kid outgrows a bike or something, we just say, here, you can take it. <laughs> Selling them is just such a, such a pain, you know, so, yeah. Rather just give it to someone else to get use out of it. Yeah, so when we gave them the little motorized Jeep, you know, they said, like, how much do you want for it? But like, no, just take it, you know. And could try to sell it on like Kijiji, but honestly, it's such a pain. I mean, just like we had with trying to sell our actual truck. Yeah, we ended up selling it to a dealer because it was just such a hassle. Yeah, like there's a guy who came and looked at it. He didn't even test drive it, said, oh, he's going to talk to his wife and bring us money we figure well that's never going to happen and then it was actually funny because after we sold it to the dealership he called again like a week later and he's like is it still around I was like no it's long gone <laughs> yeah you snooze you lose but yeah very glad that that oh selling the old truck and buying a new one is done that's just stressful yeah i don't know i don't like spending big chunks of money i never have even though it's like it's not like we're buying anything frivolous you know yeah like i said it wouldn't matter if I one day became like mega rich. I could never be one of those people who just like spends 50 grand on a bottle of champagne, right? Because it's just like, but it's 50 grand, you know? <laughs> like, it wouldn't matter what my net worth was. There's no way I could do that. Yeah. 
not when like, you know, 50 grand will buy you a brand new car. I mean, not, you know, a luxury Bentley or anything, but still you could buy a nice, you know, reliable, you, you know, new car for that price or a very nice used one, you know. Yeah, it was funny because one of my friends was saying the old song from the 90s, uh, If I Had a Million Dollars, you know. And I said, yeah, you could end that song now with, you know, if I had a million dollars, I would buy you a house. And then that'd be it because that's all it would buy you. She's like, yeah, or it would make, I would make a large down payment on a house. <laughs> you know, like, ugh. And I'm like, yeah, like in today's economy, I'm like, it would buy a house, not a mansion, just, you know, a house. Yeah. Oh dear. <clears throat> but not a new green dress, that's cruel. <laughs> yeah, because it's all talking about, you know, we wouldn't have to walk to the store, we'd take a, lim the, a limousine because it costs more. Yeah. We wouldn't have to eat craft dinner, and then well, we would eat craft dinner. It just we'd just eat more. We'd eat it with a lot of fancy ketchups, like Dijon ketchups. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because it's all if I had a million dollars, as I buy your love, but it's like it wouldn't get you very far nowadays. Yeah. So yeah, there is some closing in here on three sides. Can't be helped. Pulled a little too hard and unthreaded my needle. There we go. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get a new thread at some point soon anyway. That's pretty short. I think I'll get three stitches out of that and that'll probably be it. <clears throat> I think we got these red and orange colors and then uh, there's going to be some more that 
slope more sharply away and then we'll get to the lighter white feathers after that but probably not this month and then yeah in among those white feathers we're going to get the crest of the uh the female bird And then next month we will, I should think that we should get to the tail feathers, which, yay, my favorite part. <laughs> this one is gonna run out soon as well. I'm going to park this one over here to do that lone stitch by itself since it's a shorter piece. And then I'll add a new one to do the rest of that run. Okay, I'm gonna take all these, set them aside for a bit, and work my way from building from this side here outwards. Oh, I picked up that one too. <laughs> was being tough to thread. Usually I can thread pretty quickly. decided I was going to do, oh, what's that? I must have accidentally, there, not marked those as done when I did actually stitch them. Okay, all right, that goes quite a ways downwards, so I'm going to, although we have another thread part there, let's see how long it is first. 
Oh yeah, that's pretty long. Okay, I'll use a shorter piece then for all of these stitches here. Even a couple shorter pieces, depending. That way I won't have more thread attached than I actually need. overlapped the thread that was already there instead of going down next to it, which is what I wanted. There we go. That's better. Squeak these last two stitches out. Yeah, just barely. <laughs> nice. Love when it works out like that.
like a knot there. Extra fiber. Weird. Mm, this thread looks funny. Okay, I think I'm going to tie this off then because it's got a funny spot on it. It's like it got pulled in the surrounding thread. There's sort of a thinner spot and then a thicker spot, so I think we'll just tie this off and start anew because I don't want a weird looking thin stitch showing up. So yeah, I'm not sure how that happened. <clears throat> cheap with thread, but not that cheap. <laughs> not if it's going to have noticeable flaws on the right side. I don't want that showing, so.
stitch to 200. Yeah, why not? We're so close to that. We might as well. these three that should bring us to 200 even a nice round number to stop on yeah so perfect exactly 200 uh, thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope to see you here next time. Thanks, everyone.